And I think it can be easy for us to come into church week after week and think it's the job of the pastors to minister to people. It's the job of the pastors to take care of everybody's needs. It's the job of the pastors to do X, Y, and Z. But the word is very clear on this, that the role of the pastors, the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, teachers is to equip the saints to build up the church so that we can attain unity and maturity. So when we come into this place, we're not coming here to get our needs met. We're not coming in here to tick a box on our Sunday to-do list showing, look, I'm a good Christian, I went to church today. That's not what we're here for. We are here to be equipped and we are here to be trained so that we can do the work of ministry in the world. Look at your neighbor and say, it's training time. It's training time. And why do we need training? Why do we need to mature as a body? Verse 14 says this, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. We've got to grow up, fam. We've got to grow up. There is a lot of wind blowing in our world. There is a lot of hot air blowing. And if you don't believe me, open up social media. Okay, thanks to the gift of social media, we are all privy to every single person's opinions, thoughts, stances, offenses, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It is everywhere. It's all the time. There is no break from it. So without unity, we can't have equipping. Without equipping, we can't have maturity, and without maturity, we can't build up the body of Christ. Do you notice that it said when each part is working properly, the body grows and builds itself up? Have you ever had a part of your body just not work? Just, listen, kids, once you hit 30, stuff just stops working for no reason. You wake up in the morning, and it's like, oh my gosh, what happened? And then you kind of go, it's all right. It'll, it'll just eventually go away. I've been walking through something for the last year and a half. Um, my elbow, I'm right-handed too, so this is a great arm to have this happen to. I started having issues with my right elbow, and I just kind of did the whole, I'm going to rest, I'm going to just ignore it, and it'll eventually get better. Well, about 10 months into this pain that was not going away, I'd begin to lose strength. I couldn't even pick up a, a cup of water without using my left hand to support my right hand because my right arm was now so weak from this pain. And then it caused other problems. I started having sciatic issues because the left side of my body was compensating for the weakness on the right side of my body. Do you see that when one little part isn't working properly, how it affects the whole? The same is true in the body of Christ. Guys, listen, it's okay to come to God broken. It's okay to walk into this place and not have it all together. None of us do. It is okay to come to God that way. But when we come into this place, when we come to God, we bring our brokenness to him. And his desire is to strengthen us, to heal us, and to restore us. Because that is the power and the message of the cross. Our woundedness is not a badge of honor. The cross and the empty grave is the badge of honor that we are supposed to bear on our lives. God's desire is to have a unified, equipped, mature, loving, and strong church to reflect his kingdom in this world. Continuing on in verse 17, it says, Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. 
Paul charges us to put off our old self. Remember that the new identity that we have in Christ, and we have this new citizenship in heaven. And so part of our renewal as believers, it's connected to our thinking, to our thought patterns, to the spirit of our minds, like it says. And we have to be transformed in order for us to live a new life. We have to be transformed to put off our old self and to take on this new self, this new identity in Christ. And we are all facing an internal battle between our spirit man that wants to do the will of God and our flesh that does not want to do anything that is good for us or anything that is in alignment with the will of God. And this battle between our spirit and our flesh ultimately happens in the wide open fields of our minds. And this is why we should not believe just every single thought that we have. We shouldn't believe every single thing that passes through our mind. This is why Paul says to take captive every thought and make it obedient to the knowledge of Christ because our flesh does not want anything that's good for us. You don't believe me? Why is it so hard to wake up early in the morning to work out, but I can stay up super late at night laying on the couch binge watching Netflix? Why does it feel like I have to choke down vegetables, but sugar slides down my gullet like a greased up pig down a slide? Why is it so hard to focus and read a five minute daily devotional, but I can spend hours and hours scrolling Instagram? It's because my flesh does not want what my spirit wants. Our flesh wants what is contrary to God. But because of Jesus, we put off our old self. We are renewed in our minds and our lives are transformed for God. Because guys, it's not how it looks. Getting saved isn't meant to be a life raft on this earth. It's not meant to help us escape the messiness of life. It's not meant to, to treat Jesus like he's a magic genie and he's going to pop into our lives and poof, make everything better here on this planet. Obviously, Jesus can intervene in situations. Jesus is here to walk life with us and to be with us. But the ultimate promises, his promise to work things for our good means our eternal good. Our eternal good. And we might not see the fullness of that here on earth until we meet him in eternity. The truth of the matter is that because of our faith, we need to anticipate persecution. Jesus himself said that the world is going to hate us because of him. Hate is a strong word. They're gonna hate us. And so why does Paul seem to spend so much time focusing on our identity as believers and how our lives should look different from this world? Why does he do this? Because he knows it's not how it looks. In Ephesians 6, 19, Paul is charging the believers to always be in prayer. This is how he's beginning to close his letter. This is the end of his letter. And he says this, also for me, pray, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak Paul doesn't call himself a victim. Paul calls himself an ambassador in chains. Talk about having a kingdom perspective. I don't know if all of us would be that strong to not call ourselves a victim, to not get on social media, take a selfie of ourselves in our chains and like, look at us. No. (laughs) Social media, you guys. He's got this kingdom perspective. And because of this new identity, because of our citizenship, we are ambassadors of God's kingdom. Think about an ambassador. They carry the full authority of their home nation, of their home government into foreign places. And wherever they step, they carry that authority with them. So if we are ambassadors of the kingdom of God, if we are ambassadors of heaven, that means everywhere we step, we bring the kingdom of God with us. Everywhere we step, we can push back the gates of hell. We can reclaim territory because we are ambassadors of heaven. And all of the instructions that Paul writes in this amazing letter leads up to his final thoughts. After he's assured us of our identity in Christ, he's talked about the importance of unity, of living a life that reflects Jesus, of maturing our faith, of building up the church, of being renewed in our minds and putting on our new selves. He's done all of this work to shore up our identity because it's not how it looks. 
He says this in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That was just a clip from the full message from our weekend experience. To catch the full message, click here. Also, to make sure that you don't miss our future live experiences on Sundays at 11 a.m. Arizona time, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We want to make sure you stay connected for the full worship message and for updates about what's going on here. So click here to subscribe.